What's up? Nah, these days I'm been okay. Those other days fucking sucked. I know, I got like, I got three points I cannot find where I spent them. For some stupid reason. I know. Because you're in the same boat I'm in. Well, the last two things I can help you with. When you do nodes, you have to go there, click on them to get your guide to start working. Well, once you get your guide to start working, then you have to, um, that's what the little pick thing up in your um, UI is for. You can make him, well, no, it's just a little, it looks like a pickaxe. It's up, it's up there by your health and everything. Or not your health, but your, your AXP and stuff like that. When you click on that, you can have him start all over again because I've made 30 honey from last night till tonight when I got off. But I'm pulling all my resources back in because I'm somehow I'm missing three and I don't know where they're at. And actually, I watched a couple of videos and this guy said, you know, it's, it's good to start off as soon as you can to do it. He said, but he said, really? He said, I really didn't really notice a big change until I got to the third city. And he said, once you get to your third city, he said, that's mostly where everything's going to happen. Everything. So I'm like, okay, well, then I'm going to wait until then. But I got to find out my points. Man, I had two interviews today, all over the fucking place. Oh yeah? Did that go good? No? Yes? It's hard to say, man. I always think it goes well, and uh, you know, here I am. <laughs> So, you think you know how to enter a house, do you? I know for a fact. Now, where did I buy my fucking house? It was in Heidel, somewhere close to the... Okay, yeah. So I press R, and it gives me a whole fucking list of shit. I don't even know what this is. Like, I'm in front of the door, right? Um, it says I have a refinery. 1-1, one one, whatever that means. There's a little icon to open the door. I do it, and it says owner list. No, you're at the wrong one then. You bought an upstairs one. 
and usually it's up around the corner. What the hell do you know where the fucking entrance is? That's why I uh, I sold that type of house and got me a uh, bottom because you clicked on one that had two and you probably clicked the top one which is going to be the upstairs one. Hmm, really? Yep. See how many goddamn levels does this place have? Two. Just tried all the doors. I don't see any other. Oh, hold on. Don't hold this here. Okay, I figure out how to go on the roof. No idea. So this house has three different doors. There's one at the front and then you go to the back, go up, and there's two more. One of them will uh, be green. Uh, well, the, the one on the bottom is green. That's the only one that's green. And that's the one you go into. So I press, press R. And I get an owner's list. And that's not your house. The funny thing is when I go around, like I look at the through the window, I see a bunch of fucking people working in there. <laughs> is like when you buy it and it's a refinery, is it different than a regular house? No, they look all the same, actually. Okay, let's see. Is there a housing button somewhere? If you own a house, it'll be up in your left-hand corner. Left-hand corner? Yeah, at the top. Uh, like, why right by the level? Yeah, it'll be underneath all that stuff. Like where your worker is. Like where your pet is. Do you see that? Don't see it. Do you, you know you got the little paw print? I don't have any pets. So you never did pick up your stuff out of the mail yet then? Uh, I didn't get anything in mail yet. I did the account thing where you claim stuff and that's it. Okay, so up in your left hand upper corner you do not have uh, any type of icons at all besides your... Um, I have a pickaxe. And that's it? Yes. Then you don't own a house then. If you own a house, it would be an icon of a house up there, right next to it. That's what I remember, that's what I was asking uh, Beta last night. I'm like, I have a house. He's like, do you have the icon? He's like, no. I said, no. He said, then you don't own a house. Some take 20 minutes, some takes five minutes to be ready, but, um, you should have it by now. How so many that's weird. Points do you have? That's weird because it's green. The entrance is green, and I don't know. contribution points. Do you have any contribution points uh, missing? Uh, yes, I have 11 out of 22. 
what have you been spending your points on? I don't even know what you spent those points on. I there's only three things. There's mining, or I mean, uh, work, house, and something else. I can't remember what it is. I I bought a house. I I was pretty sure it costed ten points. I bought it. Okay, so are you in the big town then? I'm in Heidel. Open up your map. Okay. You know the, the the thing with the house, you click on it and mm. it opens up so there's all the houses? Thing with the house. No, I don't know what thing. Okay, when you when you scroll over to Hi don't open up Heidel, just open up the, your your major map and then you know, okay. move your map over to Heidel. You okay. know the big teal thing in the middle? It shows yeah. like click on it once. That brings up your okay. banking and it shows a bunch of houses. Uh, yes, shows a bunch of houses, yes. Any of them white? Yes. How many? One. Click on it. Okay. What's it say? It says refinery. Number one one, that's the green door. Okay, you're you're in town. Um is it like so one one, let me see. Uh, room three eight one seven one two one 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 Actually that that house there as a refinery only cost one point. That's it. Uh, it says contributions points eleven. Collected one. Yeah, re required collection points is one. Contribution points that you have is thirteen. Work time is five minutes. A work cost is five hundred silver, and that tells you how much money that you have. That's, that's everything it tells you. The contribution points that tells you how many you got. Like I've got thirteen out of sixteen left. If I buy this house, that'll show twelve. So, essentially, we not, we have no idea why I can't go into it. Well, that's. No, no, no. I'm going to fix it for you real quick. I can change when it you to residence. Well, um, I don't know how the. God, it kind of sucks because I don't know how to, um,. The only thing I could... Oh, is that beta? Oh, that's beta. Maybe he might be helping out a little bit. But anyway, the only way I know how to fix it is you sell it. And then you rebuy it as a residence. I haven't figured out how to buy. Because like, like the, the lodging house, that I, or storage house that I bought for um, for this guy, you, you can't go in that house. It doesn't allow you in it. Okay, so you All probably can't go into refinery either then. I, that's what I'm saying. I, I, I don't. I, I, I'm not 100 sure how that works because I know like oh, that if you buy as a, I just sold as it. a storage. Well, that's fine. That's fine because you get your contribution points back. You just don't get your your silver back that you spent. Um, like for the storage, you buy a storage oh, house, right? Dick. You cannot go into that. All that does is adds like six storage to your high dole warehouse. Hmm. You understand what I'm saying? Yep. So that's that's how, and, and then the refinery, you probably buy a refinery house, and then you t you go buy a refinery work workbench, and you put yeah. that in your residence. You see oh, what I'm saying? Yeah, so maybe yeah. it's kind of, I, I I don't know. Same with the lodge. You can't go into the lodge ones neither. I mean, you got to have them for your fucking workers, but you know. Okay, so essentially, you looks like you're uh, put stuff into your residence and go in there and do stuff. But the other two sort of just add functionality. I think so. Yes. I th if, if I'm, because uh, I've got a, a couple of videos I've been watching by this guy named Harkua. Um He goes into really good depth. I mean, he puts out like 15, 20 minute videos of everything. You know. But okay. I. Hey, he just got on too. Maybe he'll get up here and. No, it it doesn't matter. I mean, I just sold it, so I don't even want to bother with it. At this point, I'm just gonna 
I'll do my questing and see what else I can, what kind of trouble I can get into. Well, that's what I'm doing, but like I said, I've, I've looked up on forums how to figure out, is there a way to, to know what you spent your points on, and do you know how to get rid of your workers? No. See, I don't either. That's why I need to talk to Beta. Because without a house, your basic storage in Highdale is 1, 2, 3, let me see, uh, 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, 14, 16. You got 16 slots in Highdale City, and they're not transferable to any other city. Oh, they're not. Okay. Yeah, because it's like, it's like a real banking system, motherfucker. You just, you just can't go to one town and pick your shit up from all towns. No, you have, in each town, you have your different fucking, um, what you call it? banking just like your horses if you drop one horse off in fucking Vela the first city and you come to High Dill, you cannot pick that motherfucker up in High Dill. you have to go back to the other city to get it so it's like real life okay okay that sort of makes me feel like maybe I should wait with buying all this stuff and getting it in yes. like the third city or fourth or whatever yes and that's what that guy said and that's what this guy says here he says I've he said I, I'm waiting you know I waited till I got to the third city because you spend more time there Oh, okay. So it's probably bigger than Heidel. Yeah. I don't know. The freaking beta would get on here, because I know he does a lot of crafting and, you know, that good stuff. Which I want to get into crafting, I really do, because I think the crafting system in this is very... It's, uh, it's more complex, in the sense, than Star Wars Galaxy, because this here, you have to control, you know, your people, you gotta feed them, mm -hmm. you know. Putting the rebels down? I hear ya, I hear ya. one quest I just don't know how to do it what's that quest is that I ride the donkey next to Lazuro Lazu oh okay there's a name okay let's find that guy fuck I should read this stuff more carefully yeah I do the same sometimes I run off doing shit and get get fucking pissed off because I don't understand the quest and then I read it and I'm like oh so I gotta Follow this son of a bitch. Where's fucking Zero? Why don't you next to Izaro the meat kale okay, or whatever? Okay, this is Izaro. Where is this fucking guy? Zaro, that's what it says. Is this the guy? Oh my fucking god, here it comes. I'll be right back, Cryptor. Good luck. How do I find this guy? Look. 
Oh wow. Here's the horse. Yeah, you Here's the horse. You tell Kruhorn that Tito needs a vacation. Okay, go need Lorena. Okay. Who said that? Did you get the name wrong or what? Anything there? I just want one that I need for the quest. Okay, come on. Ride the donkey next to Isauro. That's Isauro, is it? Lorena. Oh, okay, never mind. That guy told me to go to Lorena. This is the donkey. This donkey here. I can't ride it. Donkey here. I can't ride it. Oh hey man, hey. Let's go. Good stuff, good stuff. I'm trying I'm going nuts here trying to figure this stuff out. I mean this is pretty straightforward. There's a how many freaking donkeys is there in here? Just a couple. I'll get this point. I'm just going closer. Let's see. Zar Izaro needs to supply. Come on. There you go. This. He's our I can't find it, guy. Okay. When I go navigate, it takes... Okay, now it takes me to this guy? El Rundi must be punished. That's the guy that gives me the quest. Oh yeah, no worries with the headset, man. A guild. But this is seriously going to drive me insane. Um, so now it wants me to go. What do you say? I guess I missed something. Uh, he's uh, still looking for a new headset. Oh, did his break last night or something? Oh, oh that's a different guy, okay. Quest location formation. What the fuck? Why can't I figure this shit out? It says go get a donkey by this guy and then just ride it to this other guy. The guy is not here, there is no fucking donkey. God fucking damn it. Fucking. I'm playing catch up. I'm just gonna fucking go and do something else. What are these fucking Tasha? Well, that's players. This guy's fucking useless. Okay. Okay, what's this? Uh, can I? Okay, can I summon this guy here? No, I 
gonna go there. Mm. Command level 20. Party player recommended to go across by counseling. Whatever, I can probably kite him. We okay. We go to the market first. Put the stuff on the market. Pick up the mail. We're going to destroy here supplies. Let's see if we can find any supplies. Uh, you've been killed by a beetle. Shit. Supplies, supplies. Just not supplies. This a is gonna try to hurt me. But we won't let him. Supplies all the way back in the castle. You kidding me? Okay. <laughs> Dog ate the headset, killed by a beetle. You can fucking write a country song. Why? I have to shoot the supply wagon. So the wagon, okay, the supplies look different, and it's not the big box things, they're like wagons with food on them. Something beeped. What beeped? Okay, I'm not gonna learn stuff here. No, I could, I guess. And this is what left. I like this one, is this? Right mouse button to console down. Actually, you know what? Why do we play around? We should put this stuff instead of the footsie stuff. Okay, who knows? Oh, there's another wagon there. Come on. Let's 
Ist der da? Sind wir zu Wagen? Ding. Oh my god, they're everywhere. This guy will want to grow. Ah, fuck. Just do this. Oh, I see him. Somebody freaking out up here and clearing stuff out. Come on. Okay, just one more. Just one more. These cart pushing was fucking suck. Seriously? I'm never gonna clear this case out in time. Run. Go. Something beeped again. All right. That's not bad. How do you feed your pet? 
No idea, don't have one yet. Donkey second take. Oh okay, let's see what we have. Whoa. Find the hawk. Still this uncover in your ground. Oh shit, is this gonna take me through the area with the bad guys? This is not gonna end well. Unless this road go just goes through, but if I remember correctly, it leads into a city full of these guys. Holy crap. What level is that guy? That is crazy. doing the quest I was doing. Can I like mouse over this guy? See his quest, his uh, level and stuff. Oh. So he just cuts through them, whereas I have to take five minutes per guy.
was showing you stuff. My health sucks. This is a bad place to be. Oh my god. Alright, um, let's see if we can outrun these guys. stairs there. Kind of hidden. The whole bomb? <laughs> Fuck, he just runs through all this. God, I should roll one of those guys. Well, I can't get up there. Wow. Wow. That's pretty cool. Do you believe everyone's on your side? Okay. Who would have imagined one of your followers would poison the well? Still don't understand, my old friend? Why do you think I was able to waltz in here unhindered? What in the world? What are we supposed to do now? Crazy. I really don't think I will ever finish anything in this fucking game. I'm going off on the fucking tenth tangent and I've just been playing for like fucking 30 minutes. What's that crypto? How do you bring up your character screen? Uh, P. Oh, okay. Let me see your titles, journal, tasks.
It's not gonna move. Sufficient energy. Whoa, it's there. Is it going after me? Oh, shoot. He's going after me. There. Spot. Okay, we should uh, get down there. This in probably go to the city, put stuff on marketplace, in marketplace. Mm. Collect whatever I have to collect. We can see if I can do that group guy. For what? For a quest? Oh. Okay. Let's go to the city, to the marketplace person. Is it sure? Heads up, Vader. Hey, how are you guys doing? Pissed off. He's more pissed off than me. I am doing great. First time in my life I'm playing a game where there's like stuff that I have no time to learn even. Hey there. Yeah, I'm getting slightly frustrated with some of the stuff in here. But well, that's I've just because it's so many things that have to happen at the same time just to do some of the crafting stuff. Right. How do you... Is there a way to look up to see what you, you spent your contribution points on? Because I'm still missing three. And I've been both to, I've been back to both towns. And I own no houses anywhere. Uh... 
I spent 10 points on something. Don't know what yet. Um, you should be able to literally just open up the map and anything that's uh, highlighted in the gold for nodes, like the gold circles. Right. Um, and any town that has the teal color, not the blue color, you have something in. Mine's teal. But what do I own? There's nothing here. Everything's gray and blue. Nothing's white. Maybe you just invested those points as opposed to buying a house? No, they wouldn't. The contribution points don't invest like that. Um, yeah, you can't invest the points. You can do your energy. Everything is blue and gray. And gold. Which gold is the, you know, the guild housing. I'm missing three freaking points. I have one worker and that's it. Looking at the whole map, I don't have anything out. I mean, um... Well, I mean, with the number of map options and other stuff, you'd think there should be something here. And I'm trying to figure out if there is something around here. Oh, but Gildy just died. Raygen just died right outside of where I'm at. It shows a picture of his death right here. I'm assuming that has to be super useful with uh, when you start doing guild wars and stuff. Because you cannot collect a node that's currently connected to two other nodes. So what's that mean? I guess I'm gonna go down here and check this shit out. Um, so you have to be invested in one of the nodes then, right? Are you invested Somewhere. in the, um, uh, whatever the resource is that's attached to one of the nodes too? Because those will take a contribution point. This one just says, uh, when I, I went to the resource manager of this node that's got a gold circle around it. Uh, it just says you cannot collect a node that's currently connected to two other nodes. What's that mean? That's supposed to mean that it's connected to two other nodes. That's okay, in a well, line, and it can't be disrupted. Okay, and it'll it lets it, I can invest energy, but I can't not nodes. See, contribution uh, investment. I don't have nothing there because I can't retract anything. So I know it's not that. one. That one there, I don't either. Back to this one here, I don't have anything connected, nothing. running from Heidel to Lynch Farm to Agento Farm. What is your name? 
Um, I believe you have to recover the contribution points from the one that's furthest away from the town first and then work your way back toward the town or toward the city. But what you're describing, it shouldn't be having that problem either. Like I said, I'm missing three points somewhere and I want them back, so. Yeah. Well, you can't have them, dammit. I'm gonna get them back. What about workers? You don't use country support for workers, do you? It's all energy, right? Where'd you have to kill them? Um, I'm pretty sure you don't use contribution points for workers because I have like f four or five of them right now. Should be using my donkey. Why am I not using my donkey? Who knows? Okay, I found it. I found one of them. Not even one more point. Actually, that one took two fucking points. This has to take one because it's the furthest out or the closest out in the town. Actually, you gotta go to the closest one, then the furthest one out. Cause I gotta make, I gotta figure out, I gotta make food for my fucking pet. Have you figured out what you need to do to craft that? What, the food for my uh, pets? Yeah. Yeah. Because as I start going through this, I'm starting to think uh, having a guild and having people producing certain stuff so that you can concentrate on producing your specific stuff is easier. Oh, I'm sure yeah, by far. I, I can't imagine. Even with 300 uh, contribution points, you're st there's going to be things that you're limited on actually doing because of the amount of stuff I have to invest just to make fishing poles. It's ridiculous. Yeah, I, and I'll tell you, that's one thing that I learned from uh, playing Arch Age is that you have to have if the, if if our guild is going I'm just saying this guild that we have right now that we're making going to get made get people in you have to have people that are dedicated you have to have a resource manager that's going to say okay bring in our nerdy what can you what 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 do you want to make do you want to make the honey pots do you want to make uh, the pet food and that's all I'll do that's all I'll ever do is just make the pet food and that's it well also I mean it's really not that difficult to pull contribution points and workers away from uh, certain nodes and then put them on different ones um, changing buildings can get a little expensive though like changing what the building does thousands of silver each time yeah um, but gathering the actual resources you could probably shuffle those around decently it's just that the production in the cities is going to be a little more difficult. No, that's why I'm saying you, we you're going to have to have like say we'll have like Cryptor uh, need you to make the buttermilk um, for to make let's say because they have guild guild runs is what I'm just going to call them. They're um, in our case you have like your normal trade packs that you can make to make money off of. Then you had guild ones. The guild ones you had to, you know, have a boat able to, you know, go, you know, go across the sea to a PVP area to sell to make the most money. But you have to make like, say, 60 trade packs. One person is not gonna be able to make 60 trade packs with the limited energy. You see what I'm saying? Well, 
that. Right, that's also the purpose on here to have alts also, so that you can end up uh, using all that extra energy for other things on here. And well, it was the same thing in Arc Age. Right. I mean, hold on, I didn't, leave me alone. Now. Right. That's like I have cow farms. I had eight cow farms that I used the milk from to help the guild. But see, in our days, remember all your points were, um, you know, I had two accounts that I was working. I had yeah, 220, same I had two twenty fours and like five five sixteens between two two accounts. Plus Slum, you know, Slum, he didn't mind crafting, but he allowed me to use his four, four or five plots he had to help the guild. Now, he would do the trade runs, you know, he'd be the one on his horse running the, the packs where we need to go, but I stayed back and made everything. You know what I'm saying? I mean, I just spent fucking all my in-game cash, everything, to make the best cart. Or wagon. Got all my contribution points back. Thank God. Time bring that tree right donkey. Yeah, um, yeah. I was watching a video on how to to do um, make the the pet food. Um, the bear's easy, which you know if you got workers, you have you definitely have to know how to do that. But horses, they live off of carrots. Which I don't mind being assigned a, a certain task in the guild. As long as you have a house, it's, it's not hard to make. So, but anyway, you know how the cooking goes or the refinery stuff works, right? Yeah. Okay, so for example, if I go buy a house and I'm making a refinery right off the bat, you cannot go in that because that's just like an extension of your residence, right? You have to have a residence to be able to use a refinery house, right? Um, from what I can tell, like uh, when you set it up, it's like a refinery or storage or whatever. It's not, it essentially takes over the building and you can't actually go inside and see what it looks like. It's just a production house. Right, so it's just an extension of, of, of a residence. It's like a, an add-on, like when you put a refinery workshop in your residence, if you have, you have to have a, re a, a refinery house, but you could do everything from your house. It's kind of like a storage for it, right? Well, um, not storage, but I mean, it, it allows you to do refinery in your residence. I have no idea how the residence stuff works for that then. Um, when I have the refinery there, I just assign the worker to the refinery, and and I know that I can't go inside of it. Okay. There you go, Cooper. Okay. So I sent, so I guess I just lost the silver that I used to buy it. Yeah. Because I know when you buy a storage house, you can't get into it because all that does is just an extension to 
your bank. That's all it is. Yeah. Like, I have tool production and I have the uh, black powder or whatever refinery thing. And then I also have the min mineral refinery, something like that. And you have a lot, and you have lodging, right? Yeah, I have uh, three different lodgings. And a few different storages, two storages, that's all. Well, I'm in two. Um, but I realized, unfortunately, that um, making the really nice mineral workbench Grad was almost useless because I don't know how to actually make copper ingots. I need the knowledge for it. And how do you get that? Let's see. I looked it up. You talked to Ficey or something like that in the town that you're near. But I haven't started the quest chain over there, so I can't actually pick up the quest. Uh. So I was starting to finish up a couple of uh, random quests at the farms over here, and then I was going to start making my way toward that city just so I can start the quest chain to get that information. Because the ability to just make all my damn tools instead of continue to um, buy them and stuff really nice, but I need to be able to actually make the materials instead of buying uh, ingots and other stuff. Yeah, because we have, where I have, I've got steel working uh, tools. Yeah, those are the ones that you get from when you buy the game, right? You're yeah, still when you using buy the, the deluxe. I haven't yeah. used them yet, because I don't, I'm not, uh, I'm kind of a pack, pack rat to be honest with you, when I get stuff like that, I know you're going to attack me, you son of a bitch, get away from me. Um, I, I don't like to use them because I know the, they'll break or they go away. You know what I'm saying? So that's why I'm trying to learn everything so I'll know, hey, just like I know my horse can die. So I don't want to even want to pull out my big horse, my, my tier three horse until I know exactly how to make food and that type of stuff. So once I figure out if it's repairable, then I'll use them. If not, then I won't use them. Well, as soon as I uh, figure out where to get tin from, and I can pick up the knowledge to actually make the the bars of stuff, um, hopefully I'll actually be able to make the, uh, the steel tools and stuff myself. problem is at such a low level right now I know that I'm not going to get to that point for quite a little bit
this in. If I'm gonna hit 20. That's my XP bar on the top or what is that? Oh no, this. Okay, okay, never mind. This is my XP bar on the very top. It shows exactly how useless I am at the moment. Freaking need to get on the road. Have you guys got any new weapons lately? Because I haven't got crap for like five levels. I haven't gotten any drops for a long time. Um, I got several drops uh, when I was fighting goblins. When I'm fighting anything else, I didn't get anything at all. What do you know? I just got a weapon. Did kill Big increase too. too. Hopefully that makes up for not getting one uh, for several levels. Yeah. Okay, I know there's a guy. I'm at on the road. It was yeah, there's a lot of stuff, man, that, that uh, in this game that nice. you can't do without the knowledge. So you have to go around and get that knowledge where you can even touch shit. Which is basically the same thing like in real life. I mean, you're not able to fucking build a car if you ain't got the knowledge how to do it. That's when you start doing it like an amateur and get a book or videos and tell you how to do it and right. then do it really badly <laughs> and then hopefully get better after that. Build a yeah. goal card then go from there. Yeah, uh, the other night, Crypto, I forgot to tell you, my buddy Chris came down and uh, we've been talking about uh, the, the production with the 3D printer and stuff like I was talking to you about a couple about a month or two ago. and. Mm -hmm. I think he's going to try going half with me on it to save me some money. Yeah, that's interesting that you mentioned that the place I had an interview with uh, today, they had two printers, but th these fucking things are like six feet high mm -hmm. and about four by four. What do they, what do they make? Uh, prototypes of telecom equipment. Nice. But the one thing I noticed though, the ones they have, the, their stuff comes out perfectly smooth, it's really nice. Um, the 3D printer we had at uh, my previous work, you know, it the surface quality was was pretty poor. Half. Yeah. Uh, there's a, because like you could buy like the, um, um, what do you want to call it? Um, It, it, is it the one that is it a the laser type or is it the filament type? Because there's like there's like the sand type. Oh fuck! Hey. Hey, what's going on? Because they've got this one that uh, it does it out of sand, and it's it's like perfectly smooth. It's like smooth like paper. You know, it looks really good. Um, it was plastic. I forgot which resin they used, but. Was plastic. Yeah, th yeah. Th these come out plastic too. But what it is is that uh, uh, instead of going back, going back and forth, it, it, it like it takes the filament and it it as it melts it like it does on the the top down. The, the top down was like you see normal, like you could buy for your house. Mm -hmm. But but what happens is is it it like melts it into 
the in, into the sand, so the sand keeps it um, like pliable until you pull it out. Where mm -hmm. with the, the other ones, it's hot, it's hard, it's going back and forth. It's got your your layers. Where this is don't have layers. This is just one one piece. You know what I'm saying? It's like filling a mold up with it. Interesting. Then they have the one. Uh, they have one that's kind of like if you're watching Terminator, Ter Terminator 2 with that liquid plasma guy. Mm -hmm. They have one like that too that comes out of plastic, man. They, you pull it out of this fucking resin, this liquid resin shit, dude. It looks perfect. It looks like you yeah, that stuff is cool. It. That yeah. stuff is cool. And it's plastic. It's just straight. It's it's ABS plastic. And I'm like, how how does how do you? And it, it is not a slow process either. You know what I'm saying? When when it when it goes down to pick it up, it's like it pulls it out like uh, like you're painting something. You know, like you yeah. dipped it in blue. Yeah, paint. I've seen them do it. It's a uh, UV sensitive resin. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, it's that 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 looks the coolest out of all of them, I think, because you basically have a puddle of crap, and then it just pulls out this fucking elaborate yes. fucking thing. Yeah. And uh, so, and he was like, you know, we was talking, and he's like, well, you know, and he made a good valid point. He said, well, you're not doing the, the stair equipment anymore. He says, so why would you want to waste your filament on something that you're not interested in? I said, well, it's not that I'm not interested in it anymore. It's just that there's too much shady shit going on, you know. But, he, you know, and like, you know, I say how they, they want to charge my, my nephew 650 bucks to build that box and everything. So they got down to 600. Now listen to this, Crypter. Listen to this. This is crazy. So he took the car over there <clears throat> the other day. Mm -hmm. They they had this motherfucker all day. I got off at four o'clock. Went to go pick him. I picked him up. We went up to go pick up his car. Well, the stereo that he bought, we don't know what happened to it. To be honest, I mean, Jeremy hooked it up, and as soon as he turned it up past like 20. And this with no subs, no amps hooked up, just using the factory speakers, the stereo was shut off. And BJ's like, look, I bought this, you know, stereo. It was, you know, a used one from, from a buddy of his. He said, we rode all the way for like like an hour and a half to go to go see this dude, go pick up this dude's dad. And the stereo worked perfect. So he goes, so I know that it's not the stereo. And Jeremy's like, look, you know, I hooked it up exactly. I used a wiring harness. I didn't have to cut none of your wires, so you know there's got to be something. A, the car's not accepting it, or there's a maybe a faulty wire somewhere on the stereo, which that could be a possibility. Oh, definitely, yeah. So he went from a, nav a big double den, seven inch screen stereo to a single den like you have in you know basic go to Walmart pickup. So he's kind of bummed about that. Well, when they built this box. They didn't use the right cubic feet. I mean, they gave him uh, each of his subs needs like 4.5 cubic feet of airspace, not including the displacement of the uh, the port or the sub. So it's got to be a giant fucking box because he's got two subs. Hmm. They gave him. They built a box for 1.5, including the displacement of the the uh, uh, six inch port. So now he's got like a little under a cube. Per sub, it doesn't hit. I mean, it does not crypto. It's it's it, it's clean sounding, but it's it's not loud like he wants. You know, so he's like really upset. I said, "Did you already pay him?" He's like, "Yeah." Well, anyway, we go up there. They're like, "Once you leave your car here overnight, we'll park it in the garage." Which is, you know, his dad worked for the DOD, or um, he worked with the Pentagon. The guy that the Mike, the guy's working on it. So I mean, he's like, "Don't worry about it. Nothing's gonna happen to him. Okay. Next day they go out there, and that's when he brought it by last night, and, and I listened to it, and I'm like, dude, you're not happy with this, are you? He says, no, man. He said, the fucking box is too small. So I guess Mike, I guess he told Mike, because I told him, I said, be honest with Mike. You know, tell Mike, hey, I'm not happy with this. I said, Mike will make it right with you. So now Mike's like, don't let nobody hear it. Don't turn it up, man. He said, just when I get back to St. Louis, I'll rip it out and redo it. So we're waiting to see what happens. And BJ's like, are you going to have him build your box? I'm like, fuck no, dude. I'm done. I told you, if your shit ain't right this time, I'm done. I'm, I'm not messing with it no more. I, I you know, so I would rather spend, um, you know, I'd rather spend, say, $800 on a, a RC car and spend 20 bucks for to go race than $90 that I know I'm definitely going to lose. 
or I, you know, I don't have a chance of coming in first place. You know what I'm saying? Yep, yep, yep. Or I can do the, you know, or you know, when I buy my 3D printer, I can make money instead of spending it. My um, pet and um, the other stuff just came in mail right now. Nice. Took a while though. Yes. The fuck where does it go? I forgot how to die. Do you guys remember how to die your stuff? Because I got those dies now. Um. Come on, this game, man. 50,000 fucking options. Combine die, beauty, potion, crafting, escape, friend, mail, college, fishing, should be an inventory. Oh. Do you guys think they're gonna have sales on the the coins, the cash stuff? Uh, oh yeah, like Arcage did, like not the actual shop stuff, but the ones that transfer into the pearls. It's not too bad right now, to be honest with you. You get a, you get a thousand of them for uh, for ten bucks. For, um, no, 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 what? Thousand for ten bucks? Mm -hmm. For but pearls. Yeah, it's one cent per uh, coin. Oh, and it's the it gold that's over one, one to one to, yeah. Gold to pearls does uh, essentially one to one. Get a little bit more pearls if uh, you do the higher amounts. Gold to. Well, no, that's a rip off then. The, I should say the coins to pearls, yeah. Because the coins are one for a buck, essentially, aren't they? Last time I checked. No, it's a, thou it's a thousand for ten dollars. Are you talking about pearls or coins? You have to buy the coins. There, it's ten bucks for a thousand, and then you could turn around and use the coins that you bought to turn them into pearls, which is one for one. So technically, for ten bucks, you get a thousand pearls. I don't know why they they got two different types of of uh, of currency in that, but that's just the way it works. Because if you look at the Pearl store... Well, I know exactly why they have the two different currencies. Because on the website they can start selling bundles that are essentially bought with coins. Rather than in the store they're going to all be, you know, in the in-game store is all Pearls. Yeah, because like if you buy, uh, if you refill your the coins, the, the Derma, or the Dama Cash, uh, a thousand for ten bucks. So once you get the Dama coins, you can come in here and buy a, a box of uh, a thousand pearls for a thousand uh, coins. Yeah, but I mean, you can't really buy anything cool under 2,000, 2,500 plus. So that means that buying anything that's kind of nifty, a mount, a uh, piece of clothing or something, will cost you 30 bucks. You could buy inventory slot, you could buy four, eight slots for 800. 
Yeah, I mean, the, the slots, the weight increases, the pets. I mean, they're all reasonably priced. I mean, the pets are a little yeah. expensive. I'd rather them be a little bit lower, but to be honest, they're not unreasonable. The problem I have is with the costumes that are stupidly overpriced. It's like, well, hey, you want to buy yeah. a costume for 25 bucks? Th they're going to have sales for sure, but I'm looking at in uh, inventory expansion mm -hmm. for plus one, and it says 1,000 price. Go under if you're in the if you're in the sale if you're in the thing, go to functionality, inventory expansion coupon. It's 800 pearls. You get eight slots. Or you can buy one slot for 150 pearls. That's weird. Why does the one on the main page that adds one inventory for a thousand? I don't know. That's bizarre. And their yeah, loyalties. That's crazy. That's loyalty. That's that's your loyalty points that you get for um, every day that you um, sign in. That's your loyalties. That's your loyalty. So you could buy that through them for. Um, Inventory, yeah, you get uh, one slot for a thousand. That's a thousand loyalty points. Oh, so okay, that's a whole different thing. Okay. Yeah, that's because that's what they were saying. That was one of their 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 one of their main selling points is is that you can still get inventory slots upgrades by just logging in. It takes longer, but you don't have to spend any real real game, you know, real money, real life money. Yeah. Fucking mounts are expensive, but they're beautiful. They did a great yeah, job. Yeah, because I have, I have 500 loyalty right now. Yeah, me too. Where do I see the loyalty at? It's under your inventory. Down at the bottom is what the L is. Okay, mine still says zero. Okay, uh, I can help you with that, I think. Is it game menu? Yeah, hit your game menu. Okay. Uh, there should be something in there that says rewards. In your lower, lower right hand corner, you don't have a little scroll there that says uh, reward. If, if not, okay, yeah. The, the, Go ahead. Why is that not even in the normal menu? That's weird. I don't know, but you can turn it on. Think me says action. I don't want that. I want that tat. Yes, game tips are off. Party off on. Residency. Okay. Okay. So I get stuff. Uh, Each day. When I became a trainee gatherer, when I reached level ten, like. Mm -hmm. a have bunch you of picked stuff. that? Have you picked that stuff up yet? Uh, no, I haven't picked up anything yet. I didn't even know this was here. Yeah. See, I had to tell Cryptor too. I forgot how to turn it on. Uh, I went into the UI uh, at the beginning and just turned everything on after I uh, saw Crypto Stream when you guys were talking just when I was waiting for the game to download and you told about the UI stuff. Yeah. Okay, so you get loyalties every single day, and then at seven days, thirty days, fifty days, and mm -hmm. uh, so and it even adds up. up, so that it's like, hey, you're super loyal for a hundred days, you get a bunch of this, you know, it's like a thousand of them, mm -hmm. on top of whatever you earned over the one hundred days. That's not bad. Yeah, it's uh, considering so that up. it doubles what you normally get over a hundred days. You'd get no, you'd get. 10,000 over 100 days if you, you know, because each day you add 100, it looks like. How? Here's a question. How can you possibly AFK fish 
if fishing requires pressing space. Is it done? Because uh, if you go AFK, then after three minutes of it saying, hey, you have a fish on the line, it automatically catches it for you. Yeah, I just asked the same question last night, Crypto. I was like, how do you AFK fish, damn it? I, hmm. I really like the fact that it's you literally just go AFK. Like, it's the least complicated AFK fishing system, but it's yeah. also, like, how does this work? My computer will never be turned off again. I knew he was going to say that, I knew it! It would be more use. like, uh, now I understand why the fish lose value. Um as time goes on, because if you just sat there AFK fishing for several days at a time, or, you know, until you filled up your backpack and then just went off, and they still cost 100% when you got to the end of the thing, it, you know, people would just be drowning in money. But yeah. because they keep losing value, that means, hey, you can really only sit here for, like, three or four hours before the value starts to reduce to the point where, unless you caught something really nice, it's not going to be worth it. That's what I was trying to do last night. And it seems like the value of the fish starts to decrease too quickly after about uh, four or five hours. I mean, it's probably still worth it. You're definitely getting more than what a fishing pole would cost, so... Well, it's, I guess, easier to fish AFK than... Easier to fish AFK than just regular fishing, because I just tried to catch my second fish and it didn't work. Goddamn bastards. Um, how did you fail the thing? Did, was it in the bar or the pressing WASD stuff? WASD? I don't see any WSD. When you're actively uh, trying to catch the fish, it says you have a thing on the line, you press space, and then it comes up with the bar that goes back and forth, and you have to get yeah. it in the blue region. Yeah. And then uh, it comes up with a, another line where you have to press the keys in the order that it says on it. And uh, it goes from kind of a difficult to see to a bright um, I think it's bright yellow or bright blue and that depends on how strong the bite is for your fish and that can usually determine uh, how good of a fish that you end up getting if you complete it fast enough so all that is bypassed if you're FK yep but it also adds three minutes after you actually get a bite on the fish so how f you can probably get um, essentially three fish every minute, or you can get one fish. I mean, not three fish every minute, but, you know, one fish about every minute, maybe a minute and a half if you're doing it manually. And if you're not, then it's usually about, you know, whatever time it takes to actually catch the fish, and then three minutes added on that. Uh, when you're actively fishing, it seems like uh, the fish actually bite a little bit faster also. I think it purposely uh, reduces the RNG chance uh, when you're AFK fishing. Because I got a lot of green stuff um, when I was AFK fishing, greens and blues, but then when I was actively fishing I'd get even more blues and then the yellow fish is um, reasonably, you know, within a 20 minute period. I ended up with a few greens and quite a few blues and then a couple of yellows and be making you know a hundred thousand or more in like a 20 minute period okay well since we started talking about fishing all I get is some rope 
Where are you fishing? <laughs> Wow, that really satisfies my needs. <laughs> yeah, fuck, man. I'm gonna be a millionaire. I don't know. I'm just... The reason why so many people fish in uh, Velia is that um, it's more likely to catch green, blue, and the yellow one is more off... Uh, turns up more often even when it has uh, less resources. It's just that the chance in, the, in that city is higher, you know. You're chance of catching something higher uh, grade is better. So that's why people are fishing there all the time. And I think it's the same in one of the other cities. Um, Hell yeah. Or high gold. Is that one on the ocean? Or is yeah. It, yeah. In the actual cities, there's a slightly higher chance of catching the better graded fish. Not that you catch, uh, not that the fish are usually worth anything more. There's several spots that they're worth even a lot more, especially in the islands out into the ocean. I decided to explore a bit, so I'm going on a field trip. Just whatever you do, don't try swimming out to an island. You just drown. Really? You need to build a boat. Yeah, apparently swimming is not a real thing here. Um, your stamina runs out, and then you drown and die. Well, it's a pretty realistic swimming simulator, really. <laughs> <laughs> It'd be better if I could swim more than 100 feet before I start drowning and dying. <laughs> I'm sure it would be a lot further once I get a stamina a lot higher, you know, higher level, higher stamina and stuff, probably swim a lot further, but yeah, that's at the low true. level I tried to swim, it was like, oh, I got 100 feet out into the ocean and I'm essentially dead. Yeah, I mean, big part of this is we're still noobs, I mean, I haven't, I don't think any of us reached 25 yet, which is what halfway point, isn't it? And even after 50, yep. Uh, people are saying you pretty much have to level to 56 to get enough points in your skills. But it's supposed yeah. to take about... It's supposed to increase really badly uh, after 50, so it takes a huge amount of time. For sure. I don't know, man. The first day we started playing this game... There was already a whole shitload of level 50s. <laughs> yeah, the thing is that getting to 50 is not too bad. It's the levels after 50 where it's... Uh, um, so when you hit 50, I think it's three times the amount of experience to hit 51. And then um, three times the amount of that experience to hit 52. And so it, um, you know, it's a giant... Uh, increase mm -hmm. your the amount of time that took you to get to 50 it'll take you three times longer to get to 51 you know and yeah. that's an insane amount of uh experience to start adding up uh, that's just like uh in everquest that's the way it was i mean to go from like 51 to like 52 it's like 3.5 million exp it's fucking insane Huh. Well, I am the furthest I've ever been. There's some interesting stuff. Interesting monsters. Rock spiders and shit. You know, to be honest with you, I really like my tamer. But, um... Yeah, yeah. There's just something about her that I I, I can't control her, like uh, like the like the warrior or the the berserker. So you went back to berserker? No, no. 
So what are you saying? Is it a problem with the combos or something else? Misleading, basically. I was figuring that I'd have my my pet out. I'd be able to use my pet, which you don't even get the pet until like fucking level fifty. Really? Yeah, yeah. You don't get it until like fucking like forty six. I think is what it is. And then uh, forty six, and then at forty nine, you can ride your pet. Yeah, I don't know how the mountain pet system works here because, from what I understand, the breeding takes it from tier 1 to tier 2. Mm -hmm. And it's different than what the levels are. So, that seems absolutely insane. Yeah, horse breeding is crazy. I've watched a couple of videos on it. It's, it's, uh, it's, it's a science. It's a pretty hostile world out there. Like this, I'm going back to the city. He said, he said, you heard him say, he said, fuck this. He is done. He's like, I'm going somewhere else. That's right, time to go home. There's a lot of interesting stuff, but it's all fucking populated by some pretty harsh monsters. Yeah. Which I'm sure will be, like, just trash for us once we level up, you know? Yeah. You know, the, my favorite thing is that the gear has no level requirements. No, it's just how much... How much um, you have, uh, make them better. Really? I haven't noticed that. I just haven't looked. Which means you can take a, a weapon that's, uh, from, like, an older character or something else that you've leveled up with your older character and you want to start, like, a, a new wizard or something else that you haven't really played before. You can level up a weapon in advance and then just hand it to them and they slice through everything, through the entire thing, just grinding up. Oh shit, I discovered the next city. Well, I don't know if it's the next city or not, but another city. It's Kaplan. The quest text for this is really odd. It says the kid is hooked on flowers and butterflies. <laughs> You know, in the 60s, that would be a um, subliminal message for, like, acid. The kid is hooked on acid. Not subliminal message. What do you call that? It's a hidden message or whatever. Not subliminal, but... It's okay. It's all good. You know... This is another game that does not have a fucking bard in it. It makes me mad. Oh, you're right. Surprising. How, based on how much detail they put in it, I would expect that... Uh, oh, fuck. That's right. All my shit is in the other city. Warehouse storage thing, RG. Mm -hmm. Son of a... Now, you can have it transported to the other bank. Cost, yeah. cost silver. You, you can have your workers transport it for you.
Hmm. I have one worker, but he doesn't look too smart. Supervise look rough, but they work neat. for excess labour. Well, it's possible, I guess. Actually, you know, I just noticed. <laughs> hmm. If you go back, okay, your contribution point. Your now your energy is your contribution energy is shared through all you through your whole account. So if you go back and make another character, you can go through all those simple quests to get the contribution points. Hmm. You mean? just uh, creating a new character and then having the contribution points added on that way? Because mm -hmm. remember, you get like four or five right off the bat, basically just by doing those little 
request it here around town. I didn't think that they added on extra after that. Yeah, yeah. I mean, you get the you know how you get the little EXP uh, tokens for your contribution. The 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 little medals with the green ribbon. Okay. Yeah, yeah that add that adds to the. I mean, yeah, it's not a lot like you get from doing the higher level quests, but it's still. So even as you're going leveling alts and stuff, you can end up even adding a little extra onto the side. Yes. I know there are a bunch of dailies that you can do that adds contribution experience. Mm -hmm. Really? Oh. Yeah, the guy over there doing the uh, mine imps, there's like two quests that he does that are repeatable. So I made a Valkyrie because they're a healer, so I'm going to try to see how this healing stuff works out. Hmm, that's not a bad idea. I might uh, check one of the other classes tonight, too. So far, I haven't really run into very much healing in the class, but defense is definitely there. For a Valkyrie? Yeah. Do you have one? Yeah, that's what I'm playing right now. It's my main character. Well, really my only character right now. See, I like the Tanger because she's a uh, air, she's one of the big area factors. For farming, at least, I should say. I shouldn't say she's, you know. Are you guys enjoying the combo system? I think that it's really interesting. Kind of difficult, some of them, but really interesting. Yeah, some of them are really hard. And I wish I had like Terra where I could set them up. I've been just so sucked in into exploring this whole world and doing the quests and the story that Jesus, I haven't looked into fucking anything. kind of sad really yeah I'm not sure if that's a good thing or a bad thing I guess a little bit of both mostly good just depends how you look at it I don't know <laughs> well as long as you're enjoying yourself that you I'm know. just having a blast seriously this this game is amazing I think
man. I, the NPC that gave me the quest, the same one I'm supposed to go back to, doesn't appear to be there. He's just gonna keep on walking. The fuck. Good place, my good place. My good place. Go to Lin Farm. Let's go to Lin Farm. This confuses me. Where are you from? Finally. Help me if you have time. God damn it. Can you wipe out those ins for me? Yes, you dumbass. Stop moving. Okay, finally we're back on track. Took the hunting dog uh, pet. Nice. I wish I had the money to actually uh, have gotten the fifty dollar pack, but I really don't have that cash right now. I just got lucky with mine. See, if I knew that this is gonna be this good, we would have gotten the hundred dollar ones long time ago. Yes. I blame it on you, Nerdy. That's fine. Uh, I checked my PayPal this, uh, before I logged in to see if uh, Camel people did the refund yet, but not yet. Oh, I filed a ticket to Blizzard mm -hmm. to uh, ask them to freeze the account so the time doesn't uh, run, you know, just go get wasted. I have like mm -hmm. fucking four months on there still. Um, they said they replied to me saying they cannot freeze an account, but if you file a ticket saying that, then when you come back, just file another one referencing that ticket number. And what they're gonna do is they're gonna refund everything 
that you lost after you filed that initial ticket. So they'll put the four months back on there, basically. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. So it's a uh, it's a good thing to do. You know. Who knows? Sooner or later, we'll be back there. This game doesn't fucking make me go nuts. So yeah, no, I guess you really do need special to specialize in this game. I mean, I don't see myself doing any crafting here and stuff like that just because I'm just busy questing all the time. You will. Because if the guild goes anywhere big, you're gonna, like I said, to do the guild trade packs, you're gonna have to have everybody doing some type of uh, crafting to make an element of those uh, packs. I um, guarantee you, not one person is gonna be able to make the pack. No, of course not. But uh, I don't see a casual guild have that kind of a, you know, uh, potential. You know, the biggest problem with casual guilds like ours is you can't really tell anybody what to do because they'll tell you to fuck off. So you can't, you, you'll never have a whole guild where everybody who's, let's say, interested in crafting is willingly gonna limit themselves to like one area that they're gonna do uh, to help the guild. And that's why you don't include them because it will be a freak ton of money involved that you're making off of this, including the money you, you put in the guild. I mean, that's what it was in, in our days. You know, you make it like, say, 90 freaking packs. You put, if I can say, 80, say 80,000 silver in the guild, and you're going to be able to split, say, 60,000 of, uh, of the extra silver between four people. You see what I'm saying? Yeah, I, see, I hear you. So the people that don't want to be involved in it, then that that's fine. But don't expect any rewards, you know, coming from the guild if you're not going to put your hand in there. Yeah. Well, there's several times that even people that are not directly involved in stuff, sometimes uh, they'll be producing something anyways, and that might be useful. Like, just on accident. True. Rather than you're there specifically, oh, we definitely, you know, we need you to make this, it's... Oh, they happen to be making this, so I can concentrate on this other thing, and uh, right, they'll contribute just because that's something that they're already doing. That, or they can, or you, like for example, Crypto, if you don't want to get into questing, but you can say, hey, you know, I don't want to do qu uh, crafting. But I'll tell you what I'll do is when you guys need to make the pack runs. Well, fuck yeah, I'll jump on my horse and run it to the next town. You know, yeah, I'll make four or five runs. That works for me. There, I mean, there's there's a lot of, there, there's a lot of things that that will be needed to do besides the crafting part. trying to figure out what the groundwater stuff actually means because I see it changing from day to day. Oh yeah, Cryptor. Did you figure out what the requirements were to make a full guild? Hundred thousand. I think. Mm, yeah, I didn't. I was supposed to check if you need to be fifty. I think. Uh, I don't know, man. I think you do. I might be wrong. Although that seems unlikely because there were so many guilds created so early. 
think it's a hundred thousand and you need five people. I think you have to have uh, a fifty to be able to b construct a uh, a portrait. It's uh, it's hundred thousand plus commission. I don't know how much the commission is. I didn't read that part. Well, there's guild missions too, and uh, guild uh, you get subsidiaries too. When a guild controls a node or a region, they can receive subsidiaries. It's just sum of silver deposited directly into the guild bank. So I'll end up selling it. Now, how to create this is from 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 Reddit. Uh, so to create a guild, you need 150,000 silver. To talk uh, talk to the NPC to create a guild. If you already have a clan, you can upgrade it for 100,000. Guild names can have 10 characters, not including space or special characters. Guild starts off with 80,000 silver in the guild bank. These funds can only be controlled by the guild leader and cannot be used for personal use. Well, let's see, what am I at? I'm at just about 30. So, do you want to uh, be guild leader of uh, this chapter, Cryptor? This one? Sure, yeah. Okay. Because there's a lot of stuff, man. We won't be doing almost any of it, though. No, no, no. I mean, as a guild leader, the things that you got to do for the guild. Like what? Uh, like recruitment and taxes. Um, guild contracts can only be done through the guild leader, which one day uh, the contract fee is a thousand. It's a five hundred salary, seven days, so forth. For thirty days, thirty thousand. Yeah. Um, once you have over 30 members, tax will be applied and automatically deducted every Monday. A list of guild taxes, 0 to 15 members is no tax, 1 to 30, no tax. Uh, level 2 is 50 members, it's a 100,000 silver tax. You can adjust the member's contracts, accept complete guild quest, declare, revoke, use guild store, disband. Yeah, the contracts are seem like they're just incentive to bring people in. Right. There. And when they expire, you're still with the guild, you just are not under the contract. But if you break the the thing with the contract, like trying to leave the guild and other, or doing other stuff, then 
you end up owing whatever the leftover of the contract is right, if you're the yeah. guildy. Uh, there's four types of guild quests that, that the uh, guild leader can uh, get. There's kill quest, gathering, crafting, and, and trading. There's four types of guild skills, combat, gathering, crafting, and trading that you have to pick. And of course you upload your own guild icon which is a 60 by 60 pixel and a, P a PNG file. Anyways, whenever you want the money to create the guild, just let me know. I can just give it to you. Well, the I, I fishing don't stuff gives enough to make that not really bothering. I don't know. Um, I don't. I don't know if we should or if we'll ever get there. To be honest. Yeah, I'm worried about the fact of if you don't have enough members, then there's certain things that you're yeah. locked out of. Well, well, there's there's tiers. I mean, literally. Um, the best thing right now, honestly, is says if, if you make the guild now, zero to fifteen members, there's no tax at all on the guild, none at all. So, I mean, this would be the best time to do it to find out what we can and cannot do. Because if if we don't do it now, if we wait until we have thirty freaking members, or you know, thirty one members, that's a hundred thousand silver tax that we don't even know where it's fucking coming from. Well, you can only have fifteen members in a clan. And once you hit that limit, you have to transfer it over to a guild to add more people in the first place. Yep. So, the question is, is what are the advantages of making a guild with uh, only five or six members? Are there any advantages if there's problems? I mean, other than, I don't know at what point other guilds can declare war. And right how much of a problem that really is. Well, that, that's, that's the thing. All the wars that are declared right now is build it's is big guilds on tiny guilds. That's the only thing that's happening. And that's just being done on um, because of nodes, right? Because of nodes? Yeah, because they own nodes that that the the big guild wants. Uh, no, I don't think so. The it's well, you have to siege the towers of the guild's nodes uh, if you want to take them. Yeah, a small guild of five people will not have towers and nodes. In, in, uh, I doubt it. Uh, I would well probably... We might consider doing it, because if you can find an area where a big guild's not going to want to encroach for any time soon, you won't have very much money coming in from it. But True. I mean, I don't think they're doing it because of nodes, though. Uh, I... I there must be some kind of a point system or something for winning this w these wars or killing uh, people. Uh, something's happening there, aside from nodes. Well, um, like Nerdy was saying, it might be worth it to make a guild with only a small amount of members just to kind of see uh, what some of the stuff is. Because even the description online, I don't understand half the stuff that you can and can't do with the guild. Well, that's true. I mean, are you prepared, though, to be in a situation where somebody declares war on us and you'll get ganked every time you go out of the city? Well, I, f I figure possibly with only about five or six members that might not happen. Um, but then again, we can always, with only the small amount of people we do have would be fairly easy to disband and create a clan again if it uh, becomes an actual problem. Mm. But there's a lot of things about the guild system that I don't understand at all. Oh, for sure, for sure. Well, for one, before they can declare war, they have to have 100,000 silver in the bank, along with 100,000 karma. You can declare war, up to, up, declare war on up to eight different guilds at the same time. Guild war information can be seen in the guild window by pressing G. Any guild can declare war at any time, regardless of the members' levels or guild level. Once you declare war, both guilds can PvP each other freely in any location. Um, the guild leader can stop the war at any time by pressing the stop button in the guild window. You can stop it instantly. I mean, if they didn't no, no, no. Them, you no, it. you can't stop it. They can stop it. If you declare war, you can stop it. 
You can't just stop somebody declaring war on you. I don't know then. I mean, I don't know... Um, so probably then, are you saying it's probably better to join somebody else's guild then, because... Either that or... I don't know, I don't know. I mean, the wars definitely slow down today, for example, but then again, they carry over for a number of days, so maybe people are just waiting to, for them to finish till they declare new ones. I don't know. Or we can just do it and see what happens. Perhaps no. I mean, th 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 that's the only problem with being small and having a guild in in a game where you can declare wars on guilds. Obviously, all the larger guys declare wars on all the tiny guys because it's an automatic win for them. You know, it's it's going to be easy for them to get one or two kills or whatever whatever it requires. The system requires to. I don't know. Or the guild quest that they might well, have I've or whatever. I've seen some, uh, um, like, there was a, uh, I think, whatever the other server, Eros or something. Uh, there was a small guild. Um, one of the guys was streaming, and they were, uh, had an alliance with a large guild. So when they got attacked by the thing, the large guild uh, ended up declaring war on the other guild that had uh, declared war on them to essentially help. And I know that's really just a social contract, not something in game set, but it might be a viable option. Oh, yeah. Actually, that's a really good point right there. It might provide us, you know, the protection, essentially, you know, help with a little bit of protection and then being able to help out on other things when available. Yeah, I mean, who knows? Maybe, maybe so we would be completely ignored. Well, here's another thing, too. On the PvP war deal, it says all members will be taking part in the war. Now, the Guildmaster can select up to 10 members or 20 members at guild, uh, 20 members at max guild skill to be exempt from the guild war. If the member is declared as exempt, this cannot be changed for at least 24 hours. The guild master and the guild officers cannot be exempt from the guild. So, Cryptor, you make the guild. If we go to war with somebody, you make everybody in the guild exempt, except for yourself. Oh, um, that at that point, it's uh, you hand over the, the guild to somebody else um, after, and then tell them to make you exempt, and they can die a hundred times. No, you just... Actually... <laughs> Actually, you. Hmm. I'd be willing to die a hundred times for the guild. That'd be fine. Well, no, There's you do one other thing. You, you, you get a second account, and you never have that character log in ever. Only when it did they declare war, you, you fucking take the leader, have that leader declare everybody exempt, and he just logs out, and then you, you know, fuck it. Every twenty-four, I mean, every day you log in, exempt everybody. Cause that's that's kind of a big investment for a second account, though, for just for that. Well, I mean, you would still play it, but I mean, you know, if, if war breaks out, like, okay, you know, all right, we'll exempt everybody, and you know, just don't play that account while you're in war. And yeah. Yeah, I mean, let's say let's say let's say we do want to do it just to give it a go I mean it would be cool to just to see what it looks like to have a guild and you know and what's available there even if we can't do much with the people we have what is it let's say let's say we get a couple more let's say we have ten people well with ten people that's really not too bad I mean the largest guilds might I don't really think they'd be a, that big of a problem. You keep saying that they're declaring war on the smaller guilds, but I'm not sure it's like 100 people guilds declaring war on 10 people guilds. I think it's 100 people guilds declaring war on like 40, 50 member guilds, where they can outnumber them two to one. And, and I bet you some Because of I don't know what resources they would get from such a small guild. Like, what would be the point? What do they get from it? Well, there must... Just karma. 
there must be guild quests associated with these wars, otherwise there would be no point other than territory control. That's what I'm. That's what I'm telling you. There's, um, there's guild quests. There's kill quests, gathering quests, crafting, and trading. Skills, actual skills for the guild, be combat, gathering, crafting, and trading. Well, kill quests that you mentioned, and are that's different than killing players in a war kind of quest. That's killing thousand orcs. Yeah, but combat. What's 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 combat? It doesn't go into. Um, yeah, I don't know. I don't know. I mean, we might as well try it. Shit, we're here. We bought the game. We're playing it. Might as well try it. If you don't need to be fifty to do it, how? Oh, why not? No, there's there's nothing about that. It just needs uh, a hundred thousand. You got to talk to the guild manager and PC. Oh shit, we can do it now if you just want. But here, this is okay, Cryptor. This is what I'm saying. There, you once you make the guild, you have to sign contracts um, to each member. Well, as from what I can what? tell, I'm not sure if you have to have a contract on each member, or yes. if that's just no, you don't. So, because from what I read, the contract could expire and you could still be part of the guild. But it's wh not like you what's have to the problem with contract every time? What's the problem with the contract? Well, I was. Just I think the problem is that when you're a guild, when new players join, you have to contract, and the minimum contract is one day. It says to create a guild, you need 100,000 silver. Talk to the guild uh, manager. Uh, if you already have a clan, you can upgrade it and keep your name. Uh, you will keep the clan name that you've upgraded to, and you will need to assign a contract to each of your members. Yeah, but wh how is that a problem? If you only got 80,000 in the guild bank, uh, 30 days, that's uh, 30,000 silver... My salary is 15,000 silver. Your salary? The salary should only be like, uh, I think it's, it's like 500 silver or less. That's for a For day. the minimum? Yeah. Yeah. Well, that's what I'm saying. I'm pretty sure that it's only um, as you join the guild, not as a consistent thing. Hmm. Huh. It says, if the guild does not have enough funds to pay the member's salary or tax, guild features will begin to disable and worsen as time goes on. Some features that will be dis uh, disabled are guild quests, contribution reward rates, member contracts. If the guild is under siege, they will only be able to defend. They will not be able to attack the opposing guild structures. So basically, to me, that means that small guilds like us have a much harder time keeping up with the money needed to keep the guild alive. Well, but this well, you get quite here. a lot of money for every time that you. Uh, it's like every time you sell something in market, uh, a percentage gets taken out. Well, I guess that's for the larger guilds. Yeah, um, but yeah. the guild quests also add money in to the guild yeah. bank, and I don't know if you can physically just add it in yourself. Because if you can just physically add it in, also, then that would resolve the problem. You can. It, cause that's what it says here. It says when funds go negative, any of the guild members, as well as the leader, can put silver in the guild bank. Members that are uh, still under contract can also leave freely without having to pay the contract fee. So if you put me on a 30 day contract with them, and if I try to leave, I gotta pay 30,000 silver up front. But my salary is 15. I don't understand what the salary bit is. That's what I'm trying to find yeah, out. Yeah, like I said, it's just an incentive thing because as I keep when I keep reading it, it just says uh, like when you just said if they're still under contract, that means that you can have guild members that are not under contract. Um, and I think it's just to keep people around, or as a option of put all your um, put all the guild members under contract. If you are a large guild, then promote tell them to you know do the guild quest so that they can continue getting money on in contract that kind right. of thing it's to incentivize people to keep 
um, adding stuff into the guild, keep doing the guild quests and stuff like that. And another thing is too, you might as well just say it that hey, you know what? When you get paid your salary, that you might as well go ahead and get that back and put that back in the guild. So that way the guild that, money is always in the bank. That's not gonna go over very well. For, well, for, for core us. members, it's just fine. But that's what I'm saying. You know, like when Dak, Dak, because you know Dak's gonna have a fuck ton of money. He always does in every game he plays. Um, Beta has found out that he makes a hundred thousand dollar, a hundred thousand silver every couple of days is fishing. Well, a hundred thousand silver every night, just going to bed, waking up in the morning, and then I add a hundred thousand to my bank without a problem. And if I actually take twenty minutes, I can get two to three hundred thousand. Okay, so money's not going to be an option. It's not going to be a problem for the guild. Not at all. I mean, right there, the Beta can, can supply the guild for as long as he... I'm, I'm just saying, not saying that's what's going to happen. Yeah. I'm just saying. Well, right now I have plenty of time on my hands uh, because, well, I'm not working. Um, so I don't have a problem with adding a little extra time in to do extra fishing to make sure the guild has plenty of money to support everything that we want to actually do. And, you know... Crypto, you don't work either. So, like, when you before you log out, you can throw your pole out there. When you get up, take you know, do your fish thing, have fish, and I'll do the same thing before I go to bed. I'll fucking throw my pole out there. I'll get up like a half hour earlier than I normally do to go to work. Get on the game, throw the money in the bank, or you know, sell my fish. It's not. It's not that hard. Yeah, it's actually really easy, the amount of time, like, when you start auto-fishing, you just leave it. When you get up in the morning, uh, you set the pathing, and you let it go. You go take a shower. When you get back, you uh, talk to the trader, sell all your fish. That's it. It's literally five minutes of your time in the morning, if that. Hmm. Once you get it set up. Yeah, you have to have the path set up, to, because you don't want to sell it local. You have to go to another city to sell it, because right. otherwise you're getting 30% oh, of the money. You have to go to some other city. Even if it's not very far, you, you'll still at least get 100% of the money. Well, as the fish will degrade overnight, so you end up with only 70%, but then you add the distance bonus onto it, and you end up with about 80% of what it was originally worth. That's still decent going overnight. I mean, that's decent for essentially what is five minutes of your time? Yeah. Like I said, I'm set up to craft fishing poles and uh, the axes and other stuff, you know, the tools. Mm -hmm. So I can, I should be, as soon as I can figure out how to actually get the ingots to process, I should be able to mass produce them for everybody every single day. If they want to do AFK fishing. Hmm. I mean, this is, I mean, Crypto, you, you've always said that you, you know, wanted a, a, a guild that's productive. And, well, we've got a game that we can do this in and have fun with it. Yeah, what are you saying? No, I'm just saying this is our chance. I mean, you know, we've, we've been trying to struggle for the last couple of years with the new name and the Sinister Savant to, to be a prospering guild. We found a new game yeah, that yeah. we like, and we can we can do this. I hear you. I hear you. Yeah. Um. It's we should be able to do some decent recruiting. I mean, the number of people I see without guilds around here is pretty good, and as long as uh we vet them at least a little bit, we should be able to get some members that may not be the best contributors, but we should be able to find quite a few if we uh do some, a little bit of recruiting every day. You know, I don't want to do mass recruiting because that would just be stupid. No. But, you know, get a couple of good people in and you can end up uh, adding up pretty quick to all the stuff that you can actually get done. For sure. For sure. Yeah, I mean... In that I mean, case... A game, like this, a game like this is just like Arch Age. It's um, you solo and just do shit. Or you make a guild and you make it thrive, or you join a big guild and 
Um, hopefully you join a really good one that's not assholes and force you to do stupid shit or they'll kick you out. Because I haven't seen any dungeons at all in this game yet. I haven't heard nobody talk about them. Nothing. So I don't think there's any dungeons in this game at all. No, but there are the world bosses and the other bosses um, around. So Right. Like the certain elite things that take groups to take down and the actual coordination that way. Mm -hmm. um, so they're not exactly dungeons like multiple things, but essentially, hey, you get an end boss. Good luck. Right. So, I mean, that's just, I mean, it, it just depends on how much time that we want to invest into the skill to make it a good one. It could be a small, but good one, or we can just find one that, uh, just join one. You know, it just it depends on what everybody wants to do. Because I know what Dag's going to say. Dag's going to say he would rather have his own guild. He doesn't like being under anybody else. Or he'd like to have our guild, you know. Oh, for sure. I mean, people wouldn't be joining this if they didn't want to. Well, no. What I'm saying is, you know how you know how Dag is, and he don't want to be in somebody else's guild when we have a guild. You know what I'm saying? Yes. Yeah. I mean, Christ, look what he's done to Gunbad, basically. He will not give them... <laughs> he would give Guild Wars Gunbad back to them because that's, you know, that's ours. And that's the way he feels. Same with Star Wars. Well, I mean, if you guys want to do it right now, I'm uh, in the city. Uh, what city are you in? Heidel. Okay, um, I'm heading over there in just a moment. Uh, how much was it? Is it just a hundred thousand, or it's is it the one fifty? It's a hundred thousand because we've already got a clan made. Oh, but what okay. is? Is it just a hundred thousand, or because uh, Cryptor kept mentioning commission? So I don't know what that yeah. actually means. Well, it did say a hundred thousand plus commission when I went to the guild NPC. Well, look at him. Well, okay. So, Beta, give Cryptor whatever it is. Give him 100,000 gold. I or whatever. Have almost 30. Well, whatever. Just, just, I was going to say, give him 100,000. That gives him 130,000. Okay. I'm at my weight limit with uh, 300,000 on me. I have no idea if uh, the warehouse silver actually transfers over to the other city or not. No. Like what I put. Okay, so I do have to actually take it with me. Yeah. Um, give him the money. Crypto, you go talk to the guy. We'll all meet in Heigl, so that, because we have to be face-to-face -to, -face to join the guild. Um, then we'll find out what, um... I think, no, uh, we just transfer the clan into a guild. Is yes, it? but we, but you, but we, I think we have to have contracts, Crypto. We have to be face-to-face -to -face for you to make the contract. I thought That's the contract... Says. Oh, you have to do face-to-face, -face, not just through the guild stuff? I think it's a From it's guild UI just for the contracts, isn't it? I am not for sure. I, mean, I can't imagine it being face to face with a hundred members in a guild, yeah. and they're trying to uh, contract everybody every like seven days or something. I don't know what the longer contract is. I know one of them is seven days, and I think thirty uh, days two is the highest. It's one seven fourteen and thirty. We might not need to have everybody with a contract, right? Uh, if I understand correctly. No, you you shouldn't have to. You might have to do... Uh, the problem is I don't know how it does when you transfer a clan into a guild. I don't know if you have to contract them or not. But it didn't seem like it um, with the stuff that I was reading. I don't know which page that you're looking at, uh, Nerdy. But I'm looking at the uh, Black Desert uh, Foundry. Um, it, this one just says if you already got it. This is if you've already got a clan... Uh, you can invite other players by going up to them. So, once you've created your clan, you can invite other players by going up to them and using the clan invite option. So, if the people are already in the clan, 
you don't uh, have to. You don't have to. So that's wrong because you can do it from the chat now. It works. Oh, you can actually do the clan invites from chat. Yeah. When that happened? Like uh, today? I don't know. That's what I did yesterday. Okay, because the other day uh, when Beta invited me, it was uh, he had to be basically face to face. Yeah, I mean we talked yeah. about this. Sometimes it seems to work. Sometimes it seems okay. to not work. Well, but it, it does say though, if if you have a clan already um, made, you don't have to. You don't, I guess, invite us. You just have to. If you invite other players, um, you have to invite them. So I don't. I don't know. I'm trying to find a guild guy in this city. I don't see one. If you go to, uh... Well, when you're in town, um, there's an icon you can click on to show certain uh, NPCs. Yeah. think that every city would have it. I know there's one in Heisel. Well, that's what we're talking about right now. That's where I'm... I got back on my other character. I'm gonna head over there now to see, um... So bad you can't just ask uh, one of the guards. Oh, I know. He's uh, in the port by the river. Yeah, that's where I was getting where I was going. That's where I was headed. It was to there. I can't pull up the thing, but I do know, I do know that there's a um, uh, a UI uh, thing that when you go into town that you can bring up and you can click on uh, whatever uh, NPC you're looking for, and uh, it'll show you the path to him. So I was trying to make it to the to the town to to tell you, but you're already there, so. Okay, does one of you guys want to do the guild leadership? How, how do we do this? It doesn't matter. I can do it. Beta can do it. You can do it. It doesn't matter. It's just somebody, whoever's got the money is going to be the guild leader. Now, once you make, uh, once you become guild leader, I don't think you can transfer it. Uh, just straight guild members, they have no um, oh, you, you say. I'm sure you can, you transfer, can transfer the guild leader. But, um... The, whoever is the leader of the clan at the time has to be the one that makes the guild. And who's that? Uh, right now that's Cryptor. Right now it's me. Okay. But 
what I'm saying is guild members don't have no um, no control. They they can't do anything. They have no um, uh, only officers and and the guild leader can do stuff. Yeah, so it's pretty guild. standard. Yeah. So here's another thing is too, it says here that um, to uh, to invite a player to join your guild, you, you go up to them and click the guild invitation uh, interaction. To become a member of the guild, the player needs to sign a contract. If that member gets kicked from the guild while still on a contract, he will be paid three times the amount of his salary. He will be paid? Yes, if you kick him, yes, before his contract's up. But... If he leaves still under contract, they will have to pay the contract fee oh, as a yeah. cancellation charge. And if they cannot afford to pay the fee, they are not able to leave the guild. <laughs> That's funny. Uh, contracts can be extended any time by the guild leader. Salary can also be adjusted by the guild leader depending on the member's con contribution to the guild. So maybe you can change how much they we get paid. You know what oh, I'm saying? I'm sure, I'm sure. So that's essentially something you would use for people that are officers, for example. Right. Th you know, that, that have specific tasks and need to, you know, donate, if you will. Right, and, part and of the you are right. Uh, it says once a contract runs out, the member is free to leave the guild and with no penalties, and the guild leader is free to kick the member with no penalties. Uh, you can only join a new guild one day after leaving your last guild, so it's a 24-hour um, deal. Turnaround. So that's not bad. So, I mean, you give everybody a, like a one-day contract, which uh, either way, if they want to leave, they're going to pay it. Or you can, you know, or put a 30-day contract on the motherfucker. That way you know they can't leave unless they've got the money. Okay, so nerdy. And KJ, one of you guys wants want to wants to try uh, the leadership thing for the guild, or I'll do it. Uh, are you in Heidel? Yes, I am. Okay, so you can so transfer the clan leader over to Nerdy. Yeah. yeah. And okay. So remember, uh, recording was gonna be is pretty crucial here. That's me, uh, Crypter. That's me, Beta. Find where everybody's um, at. I did figure out that uh, apparently guild members or clan members show up on the map anyways. When I was looking at the mini-map, I could see Crypter running around. I'm trying to find him now. Where are you guys at? Uh, we're actually standing next to the guild manager. That's down south, right? Uh, by the By the river? Yeah. Right next to the dock, where the ferry crossing keeper and the uh, storage keeper is. I am on my way. I don't know how to fucking turn... How do you... I can cancel. Like, when I click on somebody, I only have two options. Cancel appointments and banish. Holy shit. And when I click on myself, I don't get any options. What did you say the options were? Uh, cancel appointment or banish. Okay, so we can't do it with a clan. We're gonna have to transfer this into a, a guild as it is and then see if we can change the guild leader thing. Um, can we make sure that the guild actually can transfer the guild leader to someone else? That's what because, I'm reading now. Uh, need to make sure of that, because if it's not an option for some strange reason, uh, that might end up being a minor problem. 
Okay, um, uh, clan creation, active creating clan is fairly simple. The cost is nothing for players, but a little time speaking to one of the NPCs. Uh, they may invite maximum 15 players into the clan simply by uh, near them uh, interacting with R. Uh, promotion to guild. In the event that uh, you either have enough players to fulfill the requirement for the guild or simply wish to take your clan to the next evolution to form a guild. The process is actually pretty simple and involves speaking with the guild NPC looking at it. There are also a few extra requirements. Yeah, must be level 50 and must have 300,000 silver on hand. For what? Promotion to a guild. Promotion to a guild? Here. I I know what to do. I'm trying to find you guys. I really. Well, I'm go. A little lost. Go to the river. I'm at the. Well, yeah. The don't go to the fucking river. dock. Go to the fucking building right beside it. Okay, you guys are glowing green. Okay. All right, where's he at? Just a second. I see. Um, I found a giant post on guild stuff here. Want to make sure that you can actually. Uh, well, I mean, whether you can or can't, it's kind of mute point, isn't it? So you can't disband the guild when it has members in it. So apparently the guild is permanent? No, you just have to kick everybody else. Oh. Yeah. Okay, yeah. Okay, so... What we got... Clan... Uh... Okay, let me just, uh... Let's do this. Does it not allow me to actually transfer money? Hmm. I'm checking. Huh, yeah, interesting. Yeah, I don't see a spot for money anywhere on there. Okay, uh, I found something here. Um, um, let me read it for a second here. Okay, this guy says this was just made uh, 13 days ago. I says, yes, you can't do this with clans. The, the guy's question is, as he said, our normal guild leader is still on the holidays until the 5th of March. Uh, will we be able to make the clan and later turning into a guild, and when he arrives, just give it to him? Uh, they said, yes, you can't do it with clans, but uh, you can hand over the reins once you become a guild. However, it does come at a cost. You lose half your guild funds when you switch his mate. However, that's better than disbanding your guild and losing it all. Just don't work too hard on raising funds until he gets in. So you lose you lose half the eighty thousand when you transfer from um, from one guild leader to another. Well, you use half of whatever you got. So I wonder if you can probably take out that money. And well, the problem we're having right now is we don't know how to transfer money. What money to somebody else? Yeah.
Okay, I'm confused. Uh, how to give items or anything to a friend? Can somebody help me? Uh, you can't. Plus, you can't set a price you want. For instance, selling an ace you know. Zero players to trade, uh, which blocks gold farmers from being able to trade items in cash. Listed on the exchange, let him buy it. 35, 25%. No guild banks, no sharing, no kind of direct exchange. So what's going to happen is, is, um, wow. Beta's going to so have to make it. Make what? Um, just a second. Uh, I need to fix, I don't know if this item... So what? Oh, fucking pain in the ass. What I can do is put an item on the auction house for a crazy amount of money, ninety-nine thousand nine hundred ninety-nine. No, uh, you can't because the auction oh, house has shit. large prices yes. to prevent uh, yeah. strange inflation and other random stuff to destroy the economy. Stuff exactly like what one. So yeah, yeah. Well, it's a great system, really. <laughs> If you think about it, it takes care of a lot of problems. Yeah, I do like the how they set up the economy to prevent a lot of issues. But the not being able to trade with friends, I guess that was essentially to try and stop gold traders. Yeah. Um, what I'm trying to figure out is uh, the ancient relic uh, that I have. Can I trade that item? Ancient bronze coins? Uh, no, ancient relic crystal shard. I don't know. Because when you pull up your trade window, it, it shows you everything that you can trade. Out of all the stuff, I can only give you potions and beer. That's all I can give you. Yeah, looks the same here. Okay, yeah, so we just have to wait a little longer until we have the money and try to recruit as many people well, as possible in the meantime. Well, no, because Beta can do it. How? He's uh, not we'd the have leader. To destroy the clan and then recreate it. That would be the only way to do it that way, or we can just wait until uh, gets enough money and then do it that way. That, or we can remake the clan. Me, you, and Cryptor leave the clan, make a new. Well, with clans, you don't even have to wait for people to leave. You can just disband it as the leader, and literally drops everybody. But you don't. But we don't want to do that, though. I mean, we. Well, is is all the people that's in the the clan cryptor are they on the the website? Uh, I don't know. I have no idea. Um, um, the only who's Holy Slayer and Grim Death. Two new people we just picked up, right? They should be the two new people. Yeah. Yeah. Well, the Grim Death is online right now, so we can probably pick them back up into the actual guild once it's formed really quickly, but uh, Holy Slayer, that would probably be very jarring to suddenly come on and then your clan is not, you're not with the clan anymore kind of thing. Yeah. So, um, we can always explain it on the website, I think, but uh, if you guys want to, we can just remake it. Or, uh, like I said, I, if the item is actually transferable, though, but it doesn't seem like anything else is. I don't know. Which makes it difficult because I was thinking, oh, well, I can make, uh, um, like the tools and stuff. I can produce those and yeah. then give them to people, but apparently you can't trade those. So I'm very confused. Unless the guild has its own market or something. They oh. they have they have there's a guild banks too. There's guild warehouses. So once once uh, the guild gets made, then yeah, you're able to transfer items the, through the guild. Okay, so more than you except can transfer from person to person. Yeah, except for money, you can't transfer money at all, uh, because from what I understand, any money that's put into the guild bank, um, it can't be used for personal reasons at all. So, Crypto, I mean, like, I, or you, whoever the guild leader is, I can't just take, say, 10000 out to pay somebody because it's automatically paid out anyway. Uh, every Monday, um, the contracts are paid. Okay, I don't think I can uh, 
the ancient relic crystal shard that I have is worth like 150,000 minimum on the market. Um, and I was just gonna try and trade that, but it doesn't look like I can actually trade that, no matter what. At least not in the current system. It seems like it's restricting it unless you're actually part of a guild and other stuff, which, to be honest, actually makes a lot of sense when you're trying to stop gold traders and other mm -hmm. problems. Because yeah. if they're not part of a guild, then you obviously can't be trading high value items, which, you know, would mean, oh, hey, you bought this much gold, we give you a high value item that you can just sell, you know, that has a minimum guaranteed price. But if you can't transfer those items, then that essentially kills off gold traders and other stuff. Not sure it's worth the inconvenience, though. I don't know, man. I, I think it's worth it, to be honest, because this gold farmers, bots, and so on have such a negative impact on these games. Well, that's just like, look at uh, Guild Wars 2, man. Um, you can't, uh, you can't trade anything. Ah, but you know what? Ha ha ha, I just thought of something. You can't even mail nobody. Well, yeah, of course. Yeah. Mm -hmm. To be honest, I was irritated with all the mail spam from so many other games in the first place that I don't even care. That makes me happy, to be honest. Well, yeah, but I mean, I was thinking maybe we can mail items, you know. Uh, if you can't trade them, you de definitely can't just mail them to somebody. Because I'm at, I'm at 72,000 right now, and that's just me clearing out my, my inventory of stupid shit. You know, I'm wondering if the only items I can trade are ones that are market value. And since the thing that I have in Velia is market value... Um, yeah, the only things that I was able to trade was stuff that had market value. The stuff mm -hmm. that did not have market value, I was unable to trade. Yeah, because like my ancient uh, bronze coin, it says price 3000 Trade price, none. Yeah, and... Well... The trade price is actually to a, uh, the trader, um, but that's different than the market value. Yes. Like uh, when you hover over the potions, it gives you marketplace information. And the ancient relic crystal that I have has market information on it. So I'm running all the way back to Velia to grab that out of the bank. Because if I can trade that, then that should solve our problem fairly quickly. I don't know how many of those items are actually on market though, so... Well, I'm gonna go down here and try this fishing deal um, to make money um, to see what happens. Underwater looks really super good, Crypto. It's really pretty. It is pretty. Yeah, that's one of the things that I found kind of funny but irritating is that my uh, the performance of this game, my FPS, is pretty much the same no matter what setting I put it on. Uh, I did find out though that on very high in the cities, it actually drops. Uh, pretty low so I have it back to medium where it stays the same no matter where I'm at no matter how many people are around which is still not great but it's only like uh, between 40 to 45 frames uh, sometimes it'll get up to 50 but that's about it I'm sitting at like 62 with, uh, with it on high yeah my computer is really old I have a really old processor I know I'm CPU bound because, well, it sucks. And see, that's what makes me so mad about, uh... 
about uh, companies putting these games out, and there's the, the encryptor even knows there's websites out there. Say, so can I might use Can You Run It as as an example? You know, oh, you can't run this because of your CPU. Bullshit. I can still run it. It may not be gorgeous, but I'm able to play it. You know. So how do you know if you got a bite or not on your? Uh, yeah. It'll be a giant yellow button that tells you. Oh. Okay. It's a essentially built to be there's no way you can miss this it even makes a sound and it flashes and everything it's <laughs> it's like um can you please do something play our mini game it's like we don't want you to afk but you can right I talked to uh, I talked to Crypto today. Uh, uh, I, I talked to Dag today on the phone. Uh, Crypto. Okay. No fuck, he's complaining. He he's like, God damn it, nerdy! What the fuck's going on, on the website? I'm like, wait, well, because this guy's trying to sell fucking uh, socket sets. I'm like, okay, I can't do anything about it. You know, I said Crypto will see it, and Crypto will take care of it. You know. I said you should hijack that motherfucker. Or, you know, you should, like, say, oh, my God, this is, like, the best deal ever. And he's like, oh, damn, it's already gone. I said, see, Crypto took care of it. <laughs> oh, I got something over my head. What do I do? Uh. I actually enjoy the fishing minigame. Um, it's required because uh, it requires you to get it in the blue box, which is fairly big, but then the... WASD keys after that, you only have a limited period of time to actually get through the, all the keys. And if it's a very high value fish, the more keys pop up. So you can end up with a, oh crap, I have to press eight keys in the right order within like 10 seconds. Yeah, I think AFK fishing should be my friend. My wife watches this show. It's uh, on uh, MTV. It's a. Uh something about my life but this one was called uh, about my life marrying a stranger well they had one girl on there she met this guy at her friend's house and she thought he was cute oh my aunt watches that show the marrying a stranger thing i saw like two episodes of it when she was watching it when i was visiting for the holidays Th That's this was weird shit. this is a, well this is the new season I, i've never heard of it before but because last night was like the first last night, night for last winter she recorded it but um she met this guy at a friend's house and uh, he told her he'd be right back, and he never came back. He went to jail. So she's like, what if I never see him again? So she married him. Well, the other couple was that they met on World of Warcraft, Crypter. He was 18. She was 14. They dated for 10 years. They got married in, um, in WoW. She is from Edmond, Canada. She was from Denver, Colorado. She flew up there, and they got married. Is that how you met your wife? Is that what you did, Crypto? Is that what I did? No, that's not what I did. Come on, Crypto, tell me the story. No, I'm just PMing people left and right here. So how did you how did you met your old lady on StarCraft, didn't you? StarCraft 2, yeah. Or StarCraft, regular StarCraft. Regular StarCraft, but she doesn't want to play any games with you. What did you do to her, Crypter? Jeez. Crypter's like, you have no idea. Well, maybe it doesn't play those kind of games, or I don't know how Crypter's wife is anymore, though. <laughs> like, if she used to play games, is it no games at all, or just very specific types of games? Because I've met uh, some girls that they only play very, very specific games, like uh, very specific genres and nothing else. Like uh, uh, there's this uh, one girl that only played Final Fantasy games, 
essentially nothing else. Not even the other name stuff that was other JRPGs, just Final Fantasy. That was the only thing. The only game she likes to play is Kick Cooker in the Nuts. That's because she always wins. I was about to say that was one of my favorite games too. Fuck. And Who's no, I can't trade it. Oh. This is BS. Oh wow, Rush is no longer Turing anymore. Because of Neil Pert, he's not able to, to drum 100% like he wants to. Nobody's fucking replying to me, piece of shit people. Are you PMing random people in the game or people that are saying the trade stuff? Uh, people that are not gilded. Yeah, so he's just trying to talk to him. He's being nice about it. Another problem in this fucking game is you can only say so much, you know, before it cuts it's you like off. It's like Twitter and chat. Yes, yes. I think it's still longer than Twitter, but it still feels about the same. So the game's getting ready to shut down. Anyway, so it don't matter. What? Dear player, server will be shut down for maintenance from 9 a.m. till 14 UTC. Please move yourself and company to a safe zone to avoid possible death. 9 a.m. till 14 UTC? That's what it says? No, it, it says from 9 till 14 UTC. Oh, then. That's. That's a hell? long fucking time. Six hours of. Maintenance? Mm -hmm. Well, I mean. So we got 30 minutes it, until it shuts down. It is a brand new game. So it's possible, I guess. I'm so what's 14? What's, what's 14? Uh, 3 p.m. Two. Holy shit. 14 is but 2 p.m. It's essentially uh, shuts down in 30 minutes and then it's 6 hours. This really sucks. I was actually hoping to play for like another hour tonight. Yeah, same here. Same here. Huh. Actually, it's kind of late. I don't. I. I <laughs> this game sucked me in so much. I don't really feel like playing anything else. <laughs> well, I don't either, and that sucks because I'm off uh, tomorrow. Welcome. I'm gonna stable my horse. I got. I took the horse out. I got a. I don't know what you would call this fucking horse. Um, it's like black and white. It's a palomino. Spots. Yeah. Isn't palomino brown and white? I thought they were all called palomino. I could be wrong. That's what I'm saying. I know. I know the 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 spotted ones are called some type of palomino. I didn't know it was there was specific for black or brown. Yeah, I didn't think there was a specific either. But then again, I'm not really a horse person, uh, so I ain't either. But I'm looking it up. Oh, palomino is gold coat. But uh, yeah, I know what you mean. There's a similar name. That's just spotted. Pinto horse. Pinto, there you go. Any pinto panner on a black base coat. So, thus, black, white, spotted horse. Mm, pinto. Sounds like a weird Eastern European car. Pinto. 
Actually, a Pinto is actually a, a Ford car. I just realized this sucks even more because I can't AFK fish either. Nope. 